Jamie sees Beth trespassing on his house on the monitor and rushes to stop having sex, puts on his clothes and goes downstairs. When he realizes that Beth has come to kill him this time, he pushes her out of the house as hard as he can. Fuck you, Jamie! After slapping her brother to the ground and unable to get up with a brick, Beth formally declares war on him instead of continuing the attack. The trigger for this fight was Jamie accusing his adoptive father of malfeasance as governor. During the day at the impeachment convention, he accused his adoptive father of maliciously canceling the airport development in Paradise Valley, which set back Montana's economy for decades because of huge liquidated damages. He also charged John with violating the oath of office it took when he became governor. The governor is supposed to be working for the benefit of the people of the state, but now thousands of jobs have been destroyed because of his words. John's non-resident policies have brought Montana's largest source of revenue, tourism, to the brink of collapse and have caused the entire state's economy to stagnate. His statement amounted to him choosing to antagonize the Yellowstone. A Senate tribunal seeking impeachment. At this point, however, John doesn't know he's been impeached. He and the senator are standing up for the chief of the Indian Reservation. They're trying to stop the pipelines from going through the Indian Reservation because it's not only going to affect the reservation's drinking water, but it's going to damage Montana's ecosystem. Suddenly his assistant saw the news of the governor's impeachment on the trending news. The reporters in the room were in an uproar. John didn't realize what was happening until someone handed him a cell phone. Reporters raised their microphones to see how the governor would respond. John said they should focus on environmental protection and that he would handle the impeachment alone. He then left the scene. On the way back, his assistant said that Jamie's reasons for impeachment were baseless and that the whole process was a fitment of Jamie's imagination. But John has another view, because truth doesn't always win, only interests do. He knows that the balance of victory is no longer tipped in his favor. Meanwhile, the vegan in the Yellowstone shows Beth a video. Beth's blood pressure rises when she sees the video of Jamie proposing to impeach her father. She was close to chopping him up with a 40 meter machete until she saw that Jamie had a 67% approval rating. John became the first Montana governor to be impeached. That motherfucker. At first, she tried to get Rip to help her out, but Rip was on his way to pastor in Texas with the Cowboys. Beth had to deal with the problem on her own terms. She drove all night to Jamie's house. <laughs> Jamie saw Beth's visit on the security camera and stopped having sex, got dressed and went downstairs. He knew Beth would never let him go this time. Jamie tried to push her out of the house because he was stronger than her. However, Beth didn't hesitate to take out a brick and knock him out. Then she warns Jamie to call a press conference tomorrow and resign. Or she'd post pictures on the internet of how he killed his biological father. She thought Jamie would be scared of the evidence. To her surprise, he didn't care. How many bodies does your father put in the same spot? Turn me in, you turn him in. Beth's jaw nearly dropped when she heard that. She thought Jamie's last dump site was random. But she didn't know that the canyon hid a secret that's been in her family for a century. Ask him, ask your husband where the train station is and how many times he's been there. He then went on to say that he was doing it for the good of the ranch. Because the ranch's traditional sales channels are outdated, the Yellowstone Ranch's interest can only be maximized if Market Equities Corporation builds an airport in Paradise Valley and develops Montana into a tourist town. Beth, as a businessman, understands what he's saying. But she could show no mercy when he used John as a target for his attacks. So it's war. War is over, Beth. No, Jamie. War is just beginning. After leaving his house, Beth immediately returned to the ranch. At this point, John was the target of everyone's sworn. His impeachment is all over the news, and even the shooting of wolves by cowboys on his ranch has been reported. While they were discussing what to do, Beth showed up. Maybe you should take him to the train station. Outsiders had no idea what this meant. John knew he couldn't keep it a secret, so he asked the senator and his secretary to leave the room. When she and her father were the only ones left in the room, Beth wanted to know what was going on at the train station. And for the first time, John explained what it meant. It's a trash can for everyone who's attacked us. It lays in a jurisdictional dead zone, a county with a population of exactly zero. Hence, no jury of your peers and no court for a change in venue. The more Beth listened, the more goosebumps rose on her body considering that Jamie knew about it and that he was now thinking of using it as evidence against him. If Jamie got his way, not only would John lose his job as governor, but the entire Yellowstone Ranch would be in jeopardy. And that made Beth want to kill him. And I think that's the place for Jamie. Although Jamie was his adopted son, John was as devoted to Jamie as he was to his other children. He chose to remain silent. Meanwhile, the beaten Jamie sends the murderous look in Beth's eyes. I think she'll try to have me killed. As a precaution, he asks Sarah if she has the contact information of any assassins or assassin organizations. 
Since he was a kid, Beth has always been on top of him. This time, he wants to take the initiative into his own hands. Sarah knew a thing or two about assassinations. She knows of an organization that can kill a target and disguise the assassination as an accident. Just tell her what he's up to, and she'll take care of the rest. By now Jamie was completely on the wrong side of the Dutton family. His execution was perfectly timed, because it coincided with Rip taking the cowboys to Texas to graze his cattle, and he couldn't get back to the ranch anytime soon. It was the Yellowstone's weakest point. Luckily, Caius, a former Navy SEAL, moved back to the ranch to make up for Rip's absence. Have you ever seen a train station where tens of thousands of bodies have been thrown? You'll never guess who Rip, the king of fighters, first came here to throw away. It was the day that John took him into the Dutton family and branded him with the yellow stone on his chest, a symbol of great honor. And it all started with Beth. As teenagers, Rip and Beth had a crush on each other, but they didn't express their love for each other. A cowboy had the audacity to make a pass at Beth in front of him, but Beth bypassed him to say goodbye to Rip. It was very humiliating for him. And then, as they were heading up the mountain on a cattle drive, the cowboy's words were full of contempt for Beth. You know, I could be holding that girl's ass in each hand, sitting here in the sagebrush with you. Beth was perfect for Rip. Rip wouldn't take it lying down if anyone dared to insult her like that. At a young age, he revealed himself to be the king of fights. He didn't show any mercy when it came to a cowboy who was older than he was. He wanted to teach him a lesson, but this man suddenly pulled out a dagger. So Rip immediately grabbed a brick and knocked him down. Then he punched the man in the head until they lost the ability to resist. He took the man's shotgun and unloaded all the bullets. He took out his own weapon and crouched by the fire. As soon as the man dared to get up, he wouldn't hesitate to pull the trigger and shoot him. After a while, the man began to convulse. Rip realized something was wrong and covered him with a blanket. But the man didn't get better, he kept vomiting. Since he was too injured to ride, Rip had to go back to the ranch to get help. As he left, the man warned him. Tell him I fell off my horse or you'll get in a lot of trouble. A few minutes later, Rip knocked on John's door. But instead of lying, he told John how it all started. So John led the other cowboys on horseback to the mountains. But it was such a long ride that the man missed his chance to be rescued. He's dead. He's dead? Why didn't you just tell me he fell off his horse? You said I'm gonna lie to you, so I didn't. John was impressed by the honesty of the boy. He honored Rip's trust and kept his secret. He took Rip to the train station where only Yellowstone insiders knew how to dispose of the body. And that meant he would be a Yellowstone man for life. And that was the night, the old cowboy branded Rip as a Yellowstone man. But even John didn't realize that this tough kid would become the backbone of the Yellowstone. He even raised the force value of the Yellowstone to a higher level by himself. Rip has a lot of love and righteousness. Since John has given Rip a second home, he will protect all the people in this home for John. May excellent movies be watched by more people. You can subscribe to Chili Film and leave comments.